Hello and welcome to the live streamer backstage podcast. I'm Alec Johnson and this is a weekly show where I interview fellow live streamers to understand how they are using live streaming as a tool in their business and to discover the tech, the gear and the software that they use to produce great live shows. My guest today is Andrew Jenkins, an entrepreneur, keynote speaker, presenter, online content creator and of course a live streamer. Now, there is a common path into live streaming, which is that someone starts as a content creator on platforms like YouTube, maybe as, dare I say it, a hobbyist, by which I mean it's not a revenue generating business venture, at least not to begin with. And then they use live streaming as a way to help to grow their audience and to have a deeper connection with their community. Maybe they do have their sights on it becoming a business at some point further down the line, if uh, they dare to dream. <laughs> but the organic growth rate is generally pretty slow at best, and uh, I speak from experience there. Now, a less common route into live streaming is where someone has an existing business and then sees live streaming as an opportunity to serve and grow their existing or potential client base for that business. And this is exactly what Andrew has done. Andrew founded PDX Consulting nearly two decades ago to evangelize high performance teamwork from the inside out. And in that time, PDX have worked with many well-known global brands. And I'll leave Andrew to tell us the full story about that. Last year though, Andrew started Leaders Live, a weekly live stream talk show that serves and inspires business leaders through extraordinary conversations whilst also generating business for Andrew's consultancy. So I'm interested to understand how he is accomplishing both of those aims with the live stream so effectively. I'm also interested to hear about the process of launching the show and integrating it into his business. And of course, the lessons he has learnt along the way. And naturally, the show would not be complete without a discussion about the gear, the tools and the software that Andrew uses in his show. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So without further ado, let's welcome Andrew Jenkins. Hey, Andrew, it's uh, great to have you here. Great to be here. Thank you so much, Ali. You know, I, I came across Alec on um, on YouTube, and uh, obviously, and um, his take one videos on YouTube was have been so life changing for oh, me to get my. <laughs> so you know, it's it's an absolute delight to be here with you, Alec, and uh, sharing my experiences on on your show. Fantastic! So well, thank you for having me. A real pleasure, real pleasure to speak to you finally. Mm, so yeah, likewise. Per perhaps you can tell us then a little bit about, I mean, yeah. I touched on the, uh, you know, the consultancy business. Perhaps you can tell us a little bit about, yeah. you know, your background in that and, uh, and, and what you do there and then sort of how that's led into uh, the, the live streaming. Yeah, pleasure. <laughs> pleasure. So there's always a good story to everything, isn't there? And, yeah. um, you know, my, it's, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? You know, when you, you kind of think about, okay, so how did I get into live streaming? And it, it's I love that phrase that 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 quote that kind of says look life can only be understood by looking backwards and understanding in hindsight mm -hmm. but it has to be forward so it's only when we look back we kind of go oh yeah and it, it was interesting sort of you know the questions that you asked me um Alec about you know my background and what led you to live stream that I suddenly glued it all together I thought oh yeah it's like one of those aha uh -huh right, yeah. you know. <laughs> So, so for me, life started um, as an engineer. Um, I was a chartered engineer, um, and I still am, actually. I've still kept that title. Um, I, was, I, I ended up in management. And, and then in the, the dot-com bubble um, of the 90s, I mean, way back in the 90s, so, so for some live streamers, they weren't even recognised. So that's where it all started. And for me, that was a, a 486. You might remember this, Alex. You might not, yep. actually. A 486 <laughs> SX computer was mm -hmm. my game-changer moment. And, you know, one of these arrived at work and I said, well, you know, help, help yourself. Windows 3.11 was the thing then and Excel and Word. And I just blew my mind. I just thought, oh, my word, this is actually going to change the world. This is a huge game changer that's going to land on every desktop everywhere, not just one for the whole, com the whole department like I had. This is going to end up on my desk. So for me, that was a real cue for me to flip my career. And I thought, well, I'm going to go from engineering. I read an MSc in, in IT. I already got a degree in engineering. So I went to Nottingham University, reread, um, you know, oh, sorry, a second degree um, in the management of IT, and then flipped into the whole IT era and really enjoyed that. I mean, it was a phenomenal ride. The 90s were just amazing. That, that tech bubble um, that dot com tech bubble, you know, was was absolutely changing the world, you know, uh, and it's still changing the world today, isn't it? You know, and it's rapidly changing times we're living through. But that tech bubble started, you know, in the nineties, and I joined it then. And once one thing led to another, I ended up in venture capital um, um, for a UK a UK company that was globalising, and uh, IT was a big part of that and the investment strategy at that point. 
And then 2001, that bubble burst, um, 2001, 2002, the tech bubble burst, stocks and shares across the planet plummeted, um, you know, uh, including venture capital in technology, just disappeared for mm-hmm. quite a few years before it came back. So at that point, that was the impetus, really, Alec, to start PDX Consulting, because, um, you know, my background has always been, I've always been good with people. I'm a natural teacher. You know, I wanted to, I believe very firmly that the thing that will change the world coming up isn't just hard skills and technology, which which is definitely a game changer, but equally a second game changer is soft skills, um, you know, kind of emotional intelligence, high performance teamwork. And I was banging that drum 18, 19 years ago when I first started PDX consulting. So most people are like, now get out of here. You know, we just we're not interested in soft skills, you know, life changing skills or life enabling skills. We're not interested in that. You know, we want hard skills. So it's quite mm-hmm. a hard sell at that point. And in so some ways, you know, it's really taken a pandemic before we actually really understand, actually, we really need these things. So mm-hmm. I was way ahead of my time at that point when I set PDX. So that that's a little bit of, of my kind of um, background. Um, so, and, and, you know, we talked about before the show, we were talking about weren't we, the combination of experiences that that kind of lead a person to live streaming. And you mentioned earlier in your intro, you know, that quite often that's people start with content creation. And, you know, I think that's a similar story there. So for me, combination of experiences, one, you know, really good grounding in public speaking. Mm-hmm. I've been public speaking live audience these are in-person live audiences of, yes. of you know 100 200 etc do you remember those days when we used to be able to speak i, I, I remember going out sometimes wow you know and uh-huh. i love the addiction of you know being in the moment when anything can go wrong right mm-hmm. and and you know and, and things did and you have to recover from that in, a, in front of a live audience really enjoyed that and then for me content creation was a big thing um and uh Blog writing, I'm an author, so kind of all of those things, I'll talk about that in a moment. And, and then you know, also having a passion um, for social media, you know, what that means, how our personal branding, how our business branding you know, can be influenced hugely by you know, social networking. For me, that was LinkedIn. Uh, since LinkedIn began in about 2003, I think, um, I was a fan of LinkedIn. And, you know, most people were just seeing it as a CV writing tool. Yeah, I could see its future and think, do you know what, this is going to be a big tool. So I invested heavily in connections. And uh, today I've got about 30,000 connections, which is the maximum that you're allowed in LinkedIn. Right. So that's become my platform of choice. So you combine those three things up together and then with a love of technology mm-hmm. and, um, you know, being in the moment and that whole live buzz thing you know you've got to be okay with being in front of a camera and those kind of things. So skills that you've got to learn right sure sure so that's kind of how i started that whole thing alec you know and 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 really sort of being okay with video as well that came a little bit later for me but um but content came first alec uh-huh. um for me you know <clears throat> And, yeah. And, and what, just, uh, what was the sort of it, there. <laughs> what was the impetus then to actually, you know, what was the the sort of defining moment where you decided to start leaders live then, you know, to be a, a you know a, a conduit if you like into what you yeah. all you were doing with PDX? How did that come okay. about? Okay, so I mean, I think that it's again, it's one of those things that you've got to look back to look forward, mm-hmm. and uh, that story starts probably about 2010 for me actually when I did my first video shoots. Never stood in front of a camera before about 2010, and my web designer said, "Hey." why don't we do something groundbreaking and put video you on your website? Like nobody's doing that in 2010, at least what I was seeing. Very Mm -hmm. few people were doing at that point. And uh, I was like, you know, standing in front of this camera, fluffing on my words, Alec, you know, just not being like that camera, like blinking at you just really puts you off. Just, you know, but that was my first experience, 2010. And, and, you know, putting that on my website, which at that point was quite a game changer in itself, Mm -hmm. having a website with 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 video content on it that people could consume um and, and that's where it started in 2014-15 google started to announce well look you know content is the is king and high quality content is something we're going to make a big priority for google search and mobile um websites and things like that all came back that time so i started to really get heavily into blog writing and one of my big um heroes at that time was david meerman scott um he wrote books on social selling the whole concept of selling online giving first the give first economy right was, i think was created by him mm-hmm. actually way back then in 2014-15 consumed all of his books absolutely loved them 
uh, created a website uh, with a blog page on it, started writing blogs and high quality blogs that would take me you know, a couple of days to write and get right. And, yep. and at that point, LinkedIn was loving blogs. You know, you got a lot of traction on blogs at that point until Microsoft took over LinkedIn. So, you know, and then blogs sort of disappeared in, in favor of kind of more easily accessible um posts and things which is a bit, mm-hmm. bit of a shame but that's where i cut my teeth 2014 i created my first book you are more than you think the return to your authentic self 2017 i um, wrote uh, developing high performing teams so those sort of the combination of those things really started to open up my understanding of the importance of content creation and then how to then use that in linkedin to create you know a branding business model that could influence people to 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 buy my services mm-hmm. by giving first yep and essentially i still get all of my business through linkedin you know and and people that know me and those connections that i made many years back still are paying off today you know it didn't seem like it paid off at the time you know it's slow burn you said earlier these things take time to build and boy did blog writing take time to mm-hmm. build so you know that was that was the sort of first foray into early days about content creating and then video stuff. You know, I was saying earlier to you, wasn't I, that, um, that we talked about Zoom. Now, my first experience of Zoom was 2018. I'd never heard of Zoom before. I mean, most people probably never heard of Zoom until the pandemic. I'm guessing. Certainly, I hadn't. Mm-hmm. And I got a call from an American guy that wanted to to work with me, and he was heading up something called the um, the Engineering Leadership Institute in Montana him and his team and his mentor, Mark Jacobs, who was the founder of uh, MeBox.com. And they were intrigued by my blogs on uh, developing high-performing teams, soft skills, emotional intelligence, the blend of that. And it was groundbreaking for them, um, which I was quite surprised. And they were saying that in the States, they're way behind the, the Brits in terms of soft skills, which I found quite fascinating. And they wanted to create some sort of partnership. And they started to introduce me to this notion called community. I'd didn't even know what that was. And neither did we at that time. 2018, you know, community was still something, you know, we were trying to figure out what does it actually mean. And I did my first broadcast <laughs> from my garage, the makeshift studio, which was awful. Um, middle of winter 2021, videoing to America um, and with a TV screen in a hotel room full of CVs. Yeah, there it is. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, there's a, a white screen behind. Um, uh, that turned into a green screen later. Yeah, a makeshift sort of pinch for my iPhone to go on. I bought the lighting, which is about the only professional piece of kit that I had, plus a, a, a lapel microphone. I can't remember the popular brand that that was, but a little a little lapel thing. And my iPhone doubled up not only as the camera, but also the um, the, the auto cue as well. Right, right. <laughs> So, and I was beaming in from that garage in the middle of winter. And at that point in the winter, 2018, we had um, we had the thing called the Beast from the East, a huge storm. It's freezing cold here in the UK, uncharacteristically cold, uncharacteristically gale force winds. And I was freezing to death in that garage, beaming over to the to a TV screen in the States, while Randy Wall, who was my my co-associate, he was he was facilitating and I was teaching. And that was my first sort of live stream, you know, if I can call it that. Yes, yeah. Very fast. Very different from today, right? Uh-huh. I do still think you're about all- uh, going into Zoom at exactly, you know, it is just a live stream. So, I mean, probably the most live streaming I do is into Zoom. You're still just broadcasting over the internet to an audience. Uh, but one thing yeah. that was interesting about that picture is uh, my first yeah. sort of six or eight months on YouTube, uh, I was doing from my uh, my my original <laughs> studio. I, I always laugh when I call it a studio because it was in a corner of my basement <laughs> with a green screen as well. So I had this, uh, you know, sort of yeah. virtual background. But it is funny, especially with Zoom, how uh, the, you know, the ability to use green screen and virtual backgrounds, uh, that you never really quite know where somebody might well be. <laughs> and you can look very professional and, as you, you know, you can be in your garage or your basement or, or anywhere. And, <laughs> it's, uh, and that was it, mm-hmm. you know, with a blanket over me. No one knew, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it came <laughs> Course, you know, and then you know, in those days, you know, that 2018 seemed like years ago, and um, it's only four years ago. But you know, it was a it was a whole new, it was a whole different world at that point. And trying to live stream was groundbreaking. And the, the interesting thing, Alec, that, that, that the video stream held up all day. Yeah, <laughs> not bad. Uh-huh. You know, considering that was an iPhone camera and a Mac Air, a MacBook Air, not a very powerful one at that yep. point. It was already a few years old. And the Wi-Fi held up all day from my place all the way through to you know Montana, you know, in in the US. So and we they the, the you know we were teaching online at that point in time. So that was way before the pandemic. 
Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that was my first foray into into videoing. It's it's nice to have the appreciation of just how amazing it is. I mean, we were talking about it just uh, before we started as well. But we you, yeah. one of the uh, um, uh, things that JP High Tech, who was my first guest on here, and he was oh, talking about his what? his background was in you know broadcast, and so it, he has a very very clear uh, appreciation for just what yeah. we are able to achieve now with you know a, a laptop and a, a stream deck. You know, we've got all this control at our fingertips that uh, you know really would have taken tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment just uh, just a few years ago. Uh, and it's funny when you see people who are uh, maybe <laughs> having a moan about something that they can't quite do yet with live streaming and like you're sort of losing the uh, uh, the uh, the appreciation for just what we can do <laughs> these days. It's quite amazing. Absolutely, you know, and uh, it's 2019. Um, I was working as a marketing advisor for um, it's actually a glamping brand that we right. were launching. Mm -hmm. Glamping is kind of like posh camping, yeah, um, <laughs> the different more permanent structures. Mm -hmm. And this company um, needed some help. Uh, so one of my mates actually is the CEO of that company, needs some help with um, selling his plumbing and you know, waste sort of products into the glamping industry, which is absolutely necessary if you're in a field, right? You need somewhere for waste to go. It's a boring product. But, you know, we shot videos live, you know, every week, him and I would talk, you know, sitting on one of his flat tanks or a plastic tank or something, and we would just talk about it. And it was just done on an iPhone, you know, with my with tiny little microphones, you know, Bluetoothed up, and um, you know, we shot these things in one take. I thought you might like that. Yeah, done in one, <laughs> with one take, uh -huh. and uh, and but no script. You know, we just talked about these things, and you know, we popped them onto LinkedIn. You know, and they were entertaining, and we figured out that actually this entertaining thing is really useful. You know, edutainment works, mm -hmm. and. You know, people consume that concert. This was before live, but we didn't touch those recordings. We just we just recorded them and then put a top and tail on them and a little bit of words around them and then just pop them onto you know on, onto the LinkedIn feed and they they consumed really well. Actually, we were quite surprised and that really helped that brand promote itself in, right. in those early days. So you know, it all works these things, but. You know, and then the pandemic hit for me, and this is where live streaming really starts. The big driver came for me with with um, with live streaming. You know, during the pandemic, I, I I I wonder whether other people might resonate with this, but I I actually got quite ill with the pandemic. You know, being cooped up, right, isolated. Um, I'm a big extrovert, big people person. Mm -hmm. I'm cooped, um, you know, for for eighteen months probably, and um, you know, it was affecting me quite deeply actually, mm -hmm. and you know some. The friends I was talking to them, Alec, you know, I said, well, what do I do? And we came to the conclusion that, look, you've got to do something, mate, because, you know, the, that public speaking thing ain't going to come back, you know, mm -hmm. that readily, that quickly. And, you know, you need to think about something else in the meantime and get good at it. So that's when I stumbled into live streaming. And um, that was a revelation for me, Alec. You know, I picked up um, Laura Petrucci's oh, yeah. videos yeah. Mm -hmm. um, on Instagram. And you know, she was like amazing, and her team. You know, she's got a great team around her. And yep. I really learned a lot from Laura, Laura. and um, Tom Burke, and you know, Cat um, uh, Mulverhill, um, and people like oh, and of course Adrian Salisbury. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I actually met him in person during the pandemic. Oh, really? You know, with everything. Yeah, yeah, we were all masked up and everything, and uh, oh, fantastic. And we had a conference <laughs> with Glenn and Ken, yep. you know, and the team with Kate and all the rest of it. So I got to meet the team as well. Oh, great. Got a free T-shirt. Was important. Yeah. Oh, you got to get the free T-shirt in, yeah. <laughs> yeah, get the free yeah. So all of that lot happens, you know, 2021. Mm -hmm. um, well, it was sort of ongoing, but you know, the big thing for me was that the penny drop to think actually this is really interesting stuff. So I said to my FD, who happens to be my wife, which is probably the hardest FD to work for in the universe. <laughs> look, I need, <laughs> yep. I need about seven thousand pounds to to invest in some kit. Mm -hmm. You know microphone software hardware you know i started to build a list um and, and you know, funnily enough she, she actually said yeah but andrew it's got to wash its face right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because i ain't gonna buy it but that isn't it's just for your pleasure and convenience this is yep. all wash it's got to pay for itself so that was mm -hmm. the challenge so that okay fine you know so she agreed to the investment and you know, it was up to me then to make it pay yeah so that was the challenge and um I went live with Laura's team in, she has a thing called Leader. Uh, oh, right, Live yes. every day, April. Yeah. And I did that in 2021. Brilliant. And it really helped me to get confidence in front of a camera, 
you know, start to find my own personality, get okay with that, that green blinking light that's mm -hmm. you know, just blinking at you and not freaking out at a camera. And, and that was just fantastic for me. You know, that month really helped me. And the great thing about Laurie's team is that they said, look, no big tech, you know, no eCam, no, no, you know, Rodecaster Pros, no, no big sexy microphones. You just go raw with an iPhone and just, you know, you go from there. And that's what she taught me. And I just thought that was a brilliant um, introduction to, to live streaming. So by the time May 21 came along, you know, I'd already sorted out Leaders Live as, as a name. And um, I went live using my iPhone because I didn't have a LinkedIn license at that point. Right. Um, I wasn't using Ecamm right there and then. So straight onto Facebook Live, um, you know, straight from just using Facebook Live, not even restream, just straight there. Mm -hmm. And you know, the moral of the story is you don't need all the kit to start out. You know, I was still learning how to use that kit and gluing it all together. So that took me a few months before that, that caught up and I could then have the confidence to put Ecamm and cameras and audio all together. You know, it's a big thing, isn't it, Alec? You know, yes, trying yep. to get all that live. Uh -huh. you know, so, so for me, it was it was iPhone led to begin with. You know, then I got my LinkedIn license, and then you know I started to foray into. Oh, I need this thing called Restream, and so I used, started to use Restream and hooked up to LinkedIn, and then dared to go multi streaming. You know, mm -hmm. that was the next step. So, and then it just evolved from there, really, Alec. And so you mentioned a couple of things in there. First of all, about mm. Leader. One thing I'll say about Leader is I, I did it in um, August of last year. Um, I was quite comfortable uh, with going live, but I thought, well, it's it's a challenge to go live every day in August. It's just like another little thing to sort of get that practice in. What I hadn't realized when I started was actually just how structured it is. Uh, and you mentioned there yes. about, you know, starting on the iPhone and then uh, there's like a progression that you go through during it. And it's yeah. just a really well, um, a well thought out program to sort of bring people out of their shells and, you know, actually get them confident on camera. There's another thing you mentioned though about um, how obviously you've got a, you know, background in public speaking. So standing on, in, on a stage in front of, you know, hundreds of people is no issue, but there's no. something different about being on camera. Uh, and it's a weird thing because I've, I've had this before and, and especially, you know, my whole channel is to get over the uh, the issue that I had on camera, which was wanting to constantly edit myself and retake things over and over again. And that's why I just do it all in in, in one take is is to get over that. But it's it's interesting that, so that sort of transition. I just wonder if you could maybe talk about that a little bit, the, the sort of difference that you found with, um, you know, public speaking when you, I mean, it's, I, I, I kind of know the answer, I think, but it's, you know, what's, what do you find is being the difference where, you know, from public speaking on a stage to basically public speaking on a, on a live stream to, you know, hundreds of people. It's, yeah. it's a different experience, no, isn't it? But <laughs> It is a great question. And just to backtrack just a little bit, you talked about being on uh, Leaders Live August 21, you said, wasn't it? I was a moderator then. So I was moderating that. Oh, one, right, right. Um, uh -huh. the just to kind of get, well, what's the experience of moderating? So, yeah. um, Laurie, invited me to be a moderator so I, yeah i'll do that for sure and uh -huh. then um i i also loved your the thing that you talked about um uh, and your strap line recovering perfectionist uh -huh. you know and <laughs> this just I, I that that just tickles me because you know when when you're speaking in public it's not always perfection you know some mm -hmm. some people can pull off a beautiful public speak and remember all their words in their head in sequence and get it all right i'm i'm not one of those people mm -hmm. actually and for a while, public speaking, when I first began back in 2006, you know, I was frightened stiff of what happens if I forget my words. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a, it, it was massive for me. You know, um, I, as a kid, I struggled a little bit with um, a stutter um, and other things. And the, 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 the fear of going public mm -hmm. and saying stuff in front of people live, um, you know, in person was, was, you know, pretty petrifying actually but what i learned was that you know what you can build rapport with people and people are really forgiving and i might be in front of an audience and i, I kind of suddenly stop and i go now do you know what i've just forgotten my next sentence mm -hmm. now for some people that would be entirely embarrassing because you know they've got to be perfect in front of their audience mm -hmm. right a pitch perfect, everything for me it was like so what did I say a few moments ago? And someone in the audience will help you out. And yep. go, you said this. Said, oh, yeah, yeah. Or if I still didn't remember it, I'd say, right, what a teacher once told me to take two steps backwards. And once you've taken that second step backwards, you will remember 
what you've forgotten. And mm -hmm. generally speaking, I used to say that in front of the audience and they would come along with me because everybody loves someone that's not perfect, yep. right? And that was a really pivotal point for me where I could I learned that the best way to be on stage is just be me. And if that means I forget a word or I stumble over something, you know, I will say, right, that all came out wrong. Let me have another go at that. And people would actually be really OK with that in a live audience because you're real and mm -hmm. you're authentic. And my first book was called, um, you know, You Are More Than You Think, The Return to Your Authentic Self. So, you know, that was for me was demonstrating authenticity. If you're not completely perfect, it doesn't matter. So, you know, on camera, for me, the, I have to say, I had to get over that weird feeling of staring at a camera and yep. being okay with it. Mm -hmm. And that is a bit weird because you've got no one in front of you where with an audience, you can connect with someone eye contact wise. Yeah. You know, you can nod with them as, I, as I've just seen you nod. I can then nod with you, you know, and if you're in the audience, I can catch your eye. I can see what the mood of the audience is, you know, and I can gauge stuff and mm -hmm. work out, you know, where I am with the audience. But sometimes, you know, you might get that wrong, too, because, you know, they might just be really still and just listening to you. and yeah. You've got no feedback <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah. Same with the camera. You know, there's nothing that actually comes back the other end, which is actually quite disconcerting. But what I've learned is that, you know, you can build rapport with an audience. And even when things go wrong, you know, you use the, the things go wrong. And actually, Laurie Petrucci is an expert at that. You know, she would quite often say, oh, you know, no way I'm a perfectionist here and stuff goes wrong. And she just laughs it off. Yes. Yeah. And the audience go with her and that's what i learned really is go with it it doesn't matter you know I, we were talking earlier that you know i've had the phone ring right in the middle of a session <laughs> and it's right behind me this phone and i can't not answer it right mm -hmm. so i just have to stop the live audience you're going to go do you know what this is one of those moments where when you go live things go wrong and at the moment the thing that's gone wrong is this telephone ring in the background so i'm just going to have to pick it up and i bet you it's my mother so i just made a joke of it funny enough it was my mother um, so I switched it off, but then the answer machine came in. And it's like, <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. You know, how the hell do you? And I just brought the audience with me at that point. And, you know, when it came to, I, I asked my my regulars, well, what should I do with this? You know, how do I, how do I get over this? You know, do I, you know, how do I cut this out of the, the, the ECAM recording, the live recording, restream recording? And, you know, to a person, you know, my, my team just said, and the per people listening, doesn't matter. It was great, Andrew. We all loved it, mm -hmm. you know. And what I've learned is that if you're real with people and you give a lot of yourself, um, then building community is is it's about being inclusive with other people. It's not about you. So when yep. stuff goes wrong, it's actually not about you. It's about the audience being able to support you. And I found time and time again, when stuff goes wrong, the audience will support you. Yes, yeah. And that's what I've learned. Uh -huh. I was, I mean, I was watching your live stream earlier, just uh, about two hours before yeah. we started here. And uh, your guest on there was talking about, you know, when uh, being being real, basically. And, um, you know, if you if you try to be something other than you are, when <laughs> in this context, you know, if something came off the rails, then it would it would soon come out. So you better just be being yourself all the way through. <laughs> I, I think so. And yeah. I, I think there's power in that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what? How many zooms have you been on where the cat suddenly turns up yeah, and yeah. walks on the keyboard? You know, uh -huh. and it happens in live streams. You know, you get helicopters come over. I've had that happen. People mow lawns and the, the doorbell rings and the postman knocks and all of these things happen. And it only seems to happen when you go live. So the yeah. more you learn to deal with it and learn to laugh at it, and it's not about perfection. That's the other thing that I've noticed, Alec. And I don't know whether you're picking up the same stuff yourself. That um, I find. You know, when you're real and stuff goes wrong, the audience are OK with that because, you know, they sympathize with you and they give you a lot of rope. You know, where if it was a perfect, you know, recording and you're, you know, you're doing it really professionally, then a bit like the BBC where nothing ever goes wrong. right? But even in the BBC, stuff goes wrong. You know, the sound doesn't work. or mm -hmm. You know, they can't the person on Radio 4 or whatnot. But what I found is live stream audience are very, very tolerant of mistakes because they realize, you know, how much goes into it. And, you know, a lot of my guests would say when they go on live stream that they're quite worried about the first time they've ever been live streamed because it's, it's, you know, for a lot of people, it's quite a scary experience. Yes, yeah. Until after, you go, wow, that was real fun. We got through it, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and, and that's the kind of vibe that I find works well in live streaming where if it's upbeat, it's high energy and you, you tolerate things going wrong and, you know, you just go through it, you fix it as you're going, fine. I
I just want to take a moment to talk about Ecamm Live. This is the live production Mac software that we're using to live stream and record this podcast. In my opinion, it is the best live streaming and recording software on the market to date. So what exactly does it do? Well, essentially, it allows you to control the content that you're including in your video, be it a live stream or a recorded video. And you do this by building out different scenes that contain the content that you want to show. This content may be a feed from your camera or indeed multiple cameras, or you may be sharing a screen, which is what I do a lot of in my tutorial style videos that I make for my Take One Tech YouTube channel. You can share the screen from a second computer or maybe even a gaming console if you are a live streaming gamer. And just as we are doing in this podcast, you can also bring in guests using Ecamm Live's built-in interview mode where guests can join from a browser and you can then incorporate their video and audio into your production. Finally, you can add all kinds of additional graphical and animated overlay elements and even movies to really add a level of branded professionalism that would be hard to achieve in any other way. The real magic happens though when you hit that record or go live button because then you are able to seamlessly switch back and forth between all of the scenes that you've created and indeed this is how all of the videos have been created for my Take One Tech YouTube channel and the reason it's called Take One Tech by the way is because all of the videos are made in one take with no edits. I just hit record, make the video and as soon as I hit the end recording button the file is there and ready to be uploaded straight to YouTube. What I love about Ecamm is not just the ease of use that it has when compared to other live streaming software, but also the greater flexibility it gives in terms of layouts and designs that you can create for your shows when compared to some of the hardware streaming solutions. And one thing that makes Ecamm great specifically for podcasts is the fact that it has the ability to record isolated audio tracks. So once we finish recording this podcast, I'll have a separate audio file for me, my guests, and any other audio tracks that have been a part of the recording. That makes the editing and repurposing of the content for the podcast so much more streamlined. It does have another little trick up its sleeve though, and that is its virtual camera feature. This allows you to take the video output from Ecamm live straight into communication apps like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Discord, and so on. This means that rather than just appearing in Zoom meetings with a regular camera feed, you can now show up with all of the amazing production values that Ecamm Live gives you and deliver that straight into your Zoom meeting. And trust me, when you rock up to a Zoom meeting with Ecamm, <laughs> the other participants will be truly amazed. So whether for live streaming, recorded video content, or to level up your Zoom game, I highly recommend you give Ecamm Live a go. You can get a free trial by going to takeonetech.io slash Ecamm. That's E-C-A-M-M, takeonetech.io slash Ecamm. And of course, you can find a link to that in the show notes as well. You will certainly not regret giving it a go. Now let's get back to the show. That's uh, perhaps a good uh, pivot point to start talking about actually Leaders Live and like the sort of format mm. that you've got the show there because it has it doesn't feel at all like uh, a business show it i mean it's, mm. it's all really serious business conversations but it doesn't feel like i'm sitting in a business show when i'm watching it feels really entertaining uh, informative all, and uh, it's yeah. it, I, I love the, the the format of it so perhaps you could talk a little Thank bit you. about that and how you've um yeah how you mm. came up with the format and how you've uh, you know what 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 you're doing with the, the show basically yeah, and that can, really comes from my public speaking background as well. It's being able to engage an audience. I, I'm fully um, trained in NLP and things like that, you know, mm -hmm. so recognising the art of human excellence. Um, and you know, part of that is being able to build rapport with people. And I'm a big, big people person. I, mean, I think that's probably you know, the thing that stands out a lot with me. I'm a big extrovert, big people person. I'm a natural teacher. Um you know, so those kind of things really help me to engage with an audience. So purposefully, you know, I wanted Leaders Live to be engaging. I wanted it to be edutainment. I wanted it to be fun um, and, you know, spreading the love, really. We use those kind of words. You yes. know, I, I, mean, I use quite loose words when I'm in um, uh, Leaders Live. We talk about groovy, you know, be there or be square. We've got these kind of strap phrases, you know, bibbidi, bibbidi, bobbidi, boo. You know, there's kind of all of those little fun things yep. that just interject in, in between times, you know, little phrases that we say. And, and one of the things that I've been very uh, mindful of with Leaders Live, it's not about me. This is building a community of mm -hmm. people. That's first and foremost. This is about community. It's not about me. It's about a community. And you know, two or three of, or several of my members would probably say, you know, my community would say, actually, the thing I like about Andrew's show is that it's fully inclusive. Mm -hmm. you know, when we're talking, we try to include everybody. We get a lot of live comments um, coming through, which I engage with. Um, 
I introduced a moderator into the show um, about February 22. That was really successful. Where it's, mm -hmm. Again, it's not just about me. You know, we've now got more interaction um, and we can have a bit of fun on live. You know, when when um, one of my one of my um, guests once said to me, oh, you caught me on the hop, because I asked him, what's the audience question? He said, oh, you caught me on the hop in Perdine. Uh -huh. Moderator Potter says, we love doing that. We love it when we catch you <laughs> on the hop. And it was just spontaneous. You just did it in the moment. And yep. it was just it, such a, a laugh, you know, that we just, and that's the thing, you know, we laugh through the show. We have some fun with it. We, um, you know, we bring people up in terms of the comments. We, we honor people's comments and you know, people enjoy the format and it's, we, we roll like that really. So the whole thing is about spreading, spreading the love about business and making business fun and not stuffy and yes. boring. Basically. Uh -huh. so and that, that was really the concept of it. Um, um, Alec, sorry. I was just going to say, you mentioned about having the moderator, but yeah, just to mm -hmm. clarify, they're, they're like on the screen as well. So I really love yes. that that aspect of it, you know, that she's there on the screen and yeah. uh, like you say, just fully in, in, included in the, the process. So, yeah. Yeah, so. and she's just got more and more engaged with the whole thing, you know, so she'll come out with her own views. And we have a, another slot called Get to Know You in Five, which happens in the intermission period where we just bring on a regular, Yes. Um, you know, someone that's been starting to become part of the show we want to welcome them and we want to put well we see a comment from jake or from jack or whoever you know but we don't know who they are we might be able to look them up on leaders live but we've never seen them so mm -hmm. you know we get to know you in five slot is literally a five minute interlude where we introduce you know one of our community guests we talk a little bit about their business we have a bit of fun in terms of you know what's your superpower what yeah. five strengths do you think or, you know what's your favorite film what's your favorite band you know and all that kind of stuff so we can just get to know them and you know we have a little bit of banter so we've got yeah. all these windows open we've got the moderator we've got the um we've got the get to know you in five guests we've got the real guest and we've got me and we're all in these little windows and we're all kind of communicating with one another yeah. and you know i might say to jackie the guest well, what do you think about what jake's just said and then birdie will pipe up and we have this little discussion yeah. for a little while and chat goes bonkers while we're doing that and uh you know people talk about all sorts of things we had someone who's a man united fan and that just started a thread of conversation right. <laughs> it was all about man united it was like now nah, come on get back to the show folks yeah <laughs> it, it really does make so, a difference to be you know like i say to have yeah. you all on on screen it uh it, it it really does create this uh this atmosphere that's really quite unique on uh you know on on business live streams <laughs> it's yeah it's really, really yeah. effective and, and that's that's how we roll and that's how we want that's purposely how we set it up to do yep. exactly that you know and um i found that people engage with it and you know the whole point is to build community and mm -hmm. you know one, one of the things that you've introduced me to alec is this whole notion of you know have you got a followership that you can then do something with and you you introduced me to this notion of discord and, and keely dunn was talking about this the other day on your show and yep. she's a absolute master mm -hmm. at uh, discord and you know between the two of you i thought oh you know love that idea of backstage rowdies which you know i have to say you know, thank you alex a great idea having a discord opening a discord room up before the show to allow your vip guests and community just to hang out with you, you know? yeah. and at that point you're setting up the show we're having a coffee we're trying to get the audio fixed <laughs> there's kind yeah. of like stuff going on <laughs> And uh -huh. our audience are really tolerant with that. You know, they just come along with us and, it, you know, they're having a cup of coffee, they're having a chat together and we're just hanging out. And that's part of the language which we've introduced with Leaders Live. We're hanging out. It's a chat. It's not a talk. Mm -hmm. It's not an interview. You know, we hang out, we chat, we have a, we have some banter, you know, we, we, we have interludes. Um, so all of those things have, have come up in Leaders Live. And then, you know, it was a natural progression for me to kind of go, okay, how do we evolve this? So I brought a board team around me. That was the serious stuff. So uh, my wife said, you still haven't made any money out of this yet. So so you better start making some money out of this. Um, which, um, so I brought a board team around me to keep me sort of focused in terms of, look, you know, this is a business model. You know, um, yes, we're building community. Yes, we're giving first. Yes, we're being very inclusive. But actually, at some point, this has got to find some sort of way of, of, you know working out you know how how that how that pays for itself now mm -hmm. 
luckily, you know, I get phone. The, the, one of the reasons I do this is because actually it, it, it does promote people to then contact me and kind of say, hey, I saw you live on show. Can you do my team day for me? And I do a lot of those things. And that's brilliant. So that keeps Sarah, my wife, off my back right. when she says, how much is it earning? So I have actually paid back all the investment that I've spent on, right. on me <laughs> so far. So that, that's been helpful. And then getting a sponsor was, was one of the things that we talked about as a leadership board team is, well, let's, let's bring on a sponsor. Yep. And your DMS are my sponsors at the moment. And they've been absolutely fantastic because he is an advocate of the show, is Jack. Jack right. Lowe, who's the sales director of your DMS, quick shout out for him. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, he's made that possible. So, you know, and, and it helps his brand too. So, you know, we're being inclusive by helping other brands as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I mentioned that, you know, they sort of, underlying theme of this uh, this particular episode was about how um you know using the talk show to generate business for you know your consultancy and the things you're talking about now but really you wouldn't know it to look at it <laughs> you know you do put up a thing at the end with your details and uh you know but you could blink and you miss it so there isn't any sort of heavy sales in there it's it's totally the sort of give first uh, philosophy it's just such a yeah such a valuable resource i, I think so and that, that you know <sighs> We, we tried getting a little bit more product focused and we noticed our, you know, the, the audience drop off at that point. It's not salesy. You know, the mm -hmm. point is we make, we, we make it interesting. And the great thing, you know, business is full of really interesting topics and mm -hmm. they, you know, the things we kind of tackle are, you know, real front of mind. You know, I'm just, just looking at some examples. I forget we talked about vision boards at one point, mm -hmm. you know, what a fantastic thing to talk about. And we had a lady talking about that and she was an absolute darling. And we talked about mental health, well-being. We keep coming back to that. It's right. so important. This, hot topics for today and they're all related to how do we run high performing teams and part of that isn't just about you being the the businessman and you've got staff and they do what you what they're told mm -hmm. this is a whole new world you know in today's business world we need to be so much savvier with our people and that we're part of a team you're not just an employee anymore you know it's their choice to be with you at that moment in time to be working in your business so treat them well so things like, you know, mental health, um, you know, well-being, customer service we did today. We talked about resilience. We've even talked about legal issues, which you think would be really boring. Mm -hmm. But we did a thing called Legal Issues 101. We've done it twice so far with uh, um, Fashora, one of my mates, Fashora uh, Polpatai, who's a brilliant lawyer and really makes stuff fun. He's really engaging, you know, and brought legal stuff to life. And it's like, oh, okay. Books, you know, talking about book writing, blog writing, you know, stand up desks we've talked about, breath work, you okay. know, all of those kinds of things, mindset, attitude. We're going to talk about crypto at some point, you know, with um, with uh, Sophia Schluger, you know, who's a, who's a brilliant investor in crypto, fascinating right. area. So we kind of bring all of these things, digital nomads, you know, interesting business topics that people are engaged with all over the world doing mm -hmm. different things. And bringing that to the audience's attention, it's like, oh, this is fresh. It's not just talking about, you know, um, I don't know, a, a branding process or, a, yep. you know, this is how you your LinkedIn, you set up a company page, you do this. These things are all important, but actually we want a conversation. We want a story. We want to get to know the person who's talking to us, not just what they sell. Yeah, I was going to say as well, it's, it is very much the conversations. And I like the way that you do things like polls in advance of the live. And then, yeah. in you know, you're posting the questions in there and, you know, taking, you know, in-depth questions as well, not just, you know, give me a yes if, <laughs> you know, it's like you're asking meaningful questions and getting the responses back. So, yeah, it's really Yeah, we work hard getting the script right, um, Alec. You know, that's that's a that's something that I just work really hard on, getting the show flow correct, yeah. um, getting the questions. Like we agree all those up in advance they change and on a live show it kind of never quite goes to how the yep. script is but that doesn't matter <laughs> you know that's, that's a fun uh -huh. but the build-up to the show we find is really important and it's the exciting thing about the show actually is the build-up we you know once we've got the graphics sorted and the promo the promo done which we love doing because you know it teases it's fun you know it's quite high paced the way we we um we, we do our promos and that starts the interaction. And that's the fun because we're, you know, come Wednesday, we're already building for next Tuesday's show. And it's the build up is really fun, you know, mm -hmm. and our guests enjoy it. We are hangout guests because, you know, we're promoting them, we're, we're engaging with them all the time. There's always something to do every day. So on Friday, mm -hmm. we do the poll. You know, we're really consistent. Consistency is another part of the success of, and we, you hear this time and time again with your guests as well on mm -hmm. this very, you know, on the live stream or backstage stuff 
consistency, consistency, consistency. We go out live every Tuesday. And if it's not a Tuesday, it's either a Wednesday or a Monday. But that's rarely. But we go once a week. You know? yes, so yeah. next week, we can't do Tuesday. So we do Monday. But it's consistent, you know. And the way we build the show and what people are expecting, you know, those are really important parts of what we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, perhaps we can um i'm just noticing the time here perhaps we can talk talk yeah. about the sort of uh, tech side of stuff because i always uh, like to save time for uh talking about the tech uh, setups that we've uh, we've all got and uh, i'd love to hear a little bit more about um we've already seen your sort of the the starting point <laughs> so it's gone through like an evolution just as uh, we all have um and maybe just talk through like uh, how you've got things set up at the moment i can bring up a uh, i took a, a picture you yeah. sent over a video but i took out a still just so that people can uh, have a look okay. if you are watching on the uh, uh or, or listening on the audio then uh, there'll be a link to go and see the, the video if you want to come and have a look at the, uh, the the still here but perhaps you can sort of talk through this with with audio in mind <laughs> In terms okay of yeah of course by all means so um i like a clean setup you know i know i i'm fascinated like you probably are you know and, and all of your guests are fascinated by what's the tech behind it yeah now i like a, i like everything really clean i don't like jumbled up mess um yes um, at the moment this is slightly too jumbled even for me so you notice two screens that i want to get a um, one of these the apple studio yep. um, monitor Mm-hmm. That that's my, that's my aspiration. So it replaces these two because it's big enough to have all, all my screens all at one, one, uh, one place. So I, I can sort of tidy up even more. So you can see I've got the Elgato live stream there. I've got an iPad, which is the second screen, which is running Discord, um, mm-hmm. which I'm still trying to figure out um, the audio pieces to that. On the on the main screen, you can see there's Ecamm running there. On the top of that, I've got a, a Sony v, a ZV-1, um, which at the time when I invested in the, the hardware for this was the camera of choice at that point. Mm-hmm. And I know the ZV-10's out, but do you know what? It's a, it's a blooming good camera, the ZV-1. Uh-huh. And you know, I often say to people, Look, if they want a starting point, get the ZV-1. Brilliant, and it's cheaper than the ZV-10, but you know, and and it's it's really good quality. Yeah. Underneath there, you can just see in the background there, um, there's a there's a Mac Mini um, underneath the um, uh, the desk. It's a stand up desk, by the way. Yeah, it looks lovely, and uh, I love the, the the clean aesthetic. I uh, <laughs> mine's a little bit cluttered today, but uh, I like to have a nice uh, nice clean uh, <laughs> clean minimal uh, look to things. I- I can't cope unless it's nice and tidy. So, you know, no wires or very few wires. In front of you, the round lamp is it's actually a sad lamp, but it's very high um, lux, which um, keeps me sane during the winter. I do struggle with the winter blues. Right. So that's there for that. And because the studio is in, in fairly darkness, you know, that, mm-hmm. that just sort of the brightness on from, for me anyway. But also, you know, it's a nice bright light. I've got the soft, the, the you can see there, um, the soft lamp. Yep. Um, which I invested in when um, I was doing my Zooms in 2018. That's a backdrop from that. Um, yep. I've got another one behind me. And those soft lights are just brilliant. Those soft boxes, I love them. They're just, they're big, they're awkward, but I love the light from them. They're beautiful. The softness of the light is just, you know, it just softens the facial features really like that. So um, you can see my microphone there is actually, um, it, it's a, a samsung co2 i think mm-hmm. it's a condenser microphone and right the reason for it being condensed now i know a lot of people go for the shaw is it the shaw 7 or something uh, uh, sm7b is a popular one or SM7B, yeah, yeah. yeah that dynamic microphone mm-hmm. i love the sound from that but i just don't want a great big chunky microphone in front of me and that's right. the last thing that i want and i know that's a look that a lot of live streamers like i i actually happen to not like it at all so right it, i took ages choosing this this microphone now they came in a pair which made it even good because i've got two offices so i could i could set up a duplicate office right. elsewhere with a microphone and during the days of rcp1 a rodecaster pro um i had an inline amplifier fet head on this to yep. boost the game on this mm-hmm. particular microphone and i've got um what do you call it screen in front of it to, to get rid of the s's yes, and yep. things like that screen great i mean and um and an elgato um stand on it as well and it's actually a samsung stand and then my my prize of all things is the audio um rcp and, uh, and back in the day i bought the rcp one fairly early on it took me ages to scratch my head on figuring it out but when you've had audio issues and you've had slap back you know and which which is effectively an echo that you just can't seem to get rid of when you're live streaming and you don't want your guests to have to wear earphones. I wanted another solution. So I found that the Rodecaster was the only viable solution that could give me two things. One, it gave me um, 
audio processing, which I love. So you can start to process the voice a little bit. Um, you know, live, which I love. So there's no post editing here. It's all done live, which yep. I love. And the roadcaster yep. gave me all that and um, gave me gain. And more importantly, gave me a thing called Mix Minus, which I know you talk a lot about on your show. And that that just got rid of my echo issues just in one go. And it was like, ah, oh, groundbreaking. And then the RCP2 came out and it's like, oh, oh I've got to get that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, but my excuse was to my FD was, well, look, I've got, a, I've got another office, which I do get echo problems with because I've, I've only got the Scarlet 212 there. Mm -hmm. So actually now that the RCP2 comes, I can put the RCP1 in my, my sister office and then this one, the RCP2. Um, here, but you know, it took me ages to to figure out the RCP. You know, that, and but it has been that multi-channel, mixed, you know, ability to do stuff. And you can watch some great videos by by Alec on, on <laughs> how to set that. They are superb. And Alec, thank you so much for what you've done for bringing the RCP to 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 life for a lot of us on live streams. It's a big shout out for you. Oh, mate. thank you. <laughs> it's a, it's just such an awesome device. I'm, um, uh, yeah, it's uh, I'm. We're, 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 we're both tech heads really when, you know, yeah. love these sort of things, but yeah, it's just one of these devices that it's, uh, it's got just the right level of complexity for me, <laughs> you know, really get, I, my, I think, get yeah. my teeth into it. Do you know what I mean? It's <laughs> well, I mean, I remember you and I've had a conversation about loopback. So in the early days with the RCP one, if I wanted to go out to, um, if I wanted to bring a guest into zoom, for example, mm -hmm. which is something I learned from, um, is I needed a thing called loopback, um, which was even more complicated. Now, I know you, you used to like loopback because it's quirky and all the rest of yep. it. It used to cause me to end up, I just couldn't figure it out. I'm not a sound engineer. Right. And that I found very difficult. There was another piece of software that Rogue Amiga did as well that helps all the voice process. I can't remember what it's Audio, called. Audio hijack. Yeah, that's it. And I've experimented with that in my other office, you know, whilst I didn't have the RCP at right. that point. And I found it a real pain to use because it was glitchy and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. So... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just I like things bulletproof. So the RCP just seems to be completely bulletproof, and once it's set up, it just works. So, yeah, there's, um, some, there's something about a hardware device where you know you can yeah. see where the faders are, you can <laughs> press buttons. Yeah, yeah I, I prefer hardware over software. I think. <laughs> yeah, brilliant investment, and for you guys out there still wondering, should I, should not? I? Uh, definitely do. It's it's an absolute game changer for me. Um, I've got the Elgato Stream Deck, the the, the XL version of that. I think it's called the XL, um, which gives me lots of buttons to press, which is really handy. And, you know, I can't do without that. Alec, I know you've got the foot pedal. That's going to be a next investment of mine, the foot right. pedal. But it's hard when you're standing up because I stand up at my desk. So I'm yep. standing it right now. Mm -hmm. You can't see but underneath my feet here. I've got um, I've got a balance board. So it's quite a flat board, but it helps me to. I find this is one of those left brain left brain right brain things that kind of just helps me to integrate left brain right brain together being on a balance board is a little one percent difference that makes the difference for me right so it keeps me on literally on my toes but somehow being on this balance board just keeps me absolutely on it you know so th mm -hmm. that's a bit of my kick it's, and just behind you as well i like the i like the whole sort of vibe that you've got going on uh, going on behind as well it's, it's be awesome yeah me, uh, a yeah. friend of mine uh, that is um, that that is a um, an authentic piece he did for me. It's my handwriting. Be awesome, um, and that came from the show Kung, Kung Fu Panda. You know, no, there is no charge for awesomeness, which is another one of our strap lines right. in leaders' lives. So the be awesome thing um, is is important for me. No charge for awesomeness, and then of course all the the Lego stuff. I mean, I love the RCP two. You know, my childhood is is Captain Scarlet. Apollo eleven was massive. The Daleks, Star Wars. Underneath, you can't quite see it because it's black. Is um, um, the Batman Mobile? Yep. Various toys of my childhood. You know, the Daleks, Batman, and things like that are all part of my my upbringing. And um, I wanted to just weave those things into the show. And the reason for that is that the perfectionists. The ones with the real life of detail. Now they're the ones kind of looking behind the show and kind of going, "Oh, oh, you've got a Captain Scarlet, yeah. you know, or oh, a Black Dalek, you yeah. know." So it's for those that like looking, and I, I put those little details in for people to spot, mm -hmm. and it's lovely when they do spot it. So you know, it just keeps the detail people occupied for a little while. Yeah, yeah, it's good. it just gives a really nice vibe to the whole sort of uh, to the show as well for leaders live. I think it's just got a. <laughs> It's consistent with the whole aesthetic and everything of the, the show. It's, 
Yeah, that yeah, and we've I've worked hard at trying to get the aesthetic right and the colours and things like that. You know, make it funky, really, which is part of how we roll on Leaders Live. Yeah. Funky. <laughs> now, I always ask them about it for a, a book recommendation, and uh, oh yes. I mean, I've included uh, your books, obviously, in the carousel for those watching on Amazon. Uh, but uh, yeah, perhaps you can tell us about your your book choice because this is one of my favourites as well, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so for me, the thing that got me started in personal development was when I was in my thirties, and I picked up this. It, it, I was ashamed of it actually because it was a personal development book, and you don't pick those. It's like it's like picking porn up in the in the shop. You just don't do it. You know, you don't do personal development. So I picked this book up called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which is one of those self-help books. And back in the day, self-help was considered a little bit like, well, you know, come on. Um, but I just found Stephen Covey's Seven Principles of Highly Effective People just absolute groundbreaker. And it was like one of his stock phrases, which I mentioned in today's show, actually, is yep. seek to understand before being understood. And, you know, that is so true of of our business practice as well is that we often in the lack of information we make assumptions and i love the way he talks about breaking assumptions by really deeply understanding people and you know getting to what's really going on and if you understand what's happening with one of your customers you know good or bad then you you know you can you, you can you, you can help them i remember one of my customers talking about another one of my favorite books is the which was mentioned the other day on your show which is the give first economy mm-hmm. brilliant book you know where we give first and you know this is where um stephen covey was talking about too you know i remember um, a director uh, that i'd met for the first time doing some business and i was he said, right, tell me what, you know, why am I standing in front of you? Because I don't see people like yourself. And yet I'm standing in front of you. My my secretary said, you've got to meet Andrew. He's brilliant. He's a lovely guy. You know, so here I am. Convince me. So I started to talk about the stuff that I sell. You know, no, don't want that. No, I'm not interested. No, I don't want that. Anyway, I just I then just relaxed with him. I just keep back and said, you know what? I've been um, I'm a fully qualified hypnotherapist. Not a lot of people know that, and I'm actually really good at it. And suddenly I saw him interested, and we just had a conversation about hypnosis. And he said, would you help me? Because I've got an issue that I want to sort out, you know. And but I can't pay you right now. And I said, don't worry, you know, we'll just do this. He said, I'll book the room. He'll book it. He'll pay for the room and you know pay for coffee and stuff. But you know, I would give my services to him, you know, as, as a free of charge thing. And I just liked the guy. So I just, of course, three months later, I, he booked me two or three courses doing NLP for sales and for his HR team. And he recommended me to lots of other people as well. And, you know, that course just kept on giving because of, of one free thing that yes. I gave to somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what I learned from the seven habits of highly effective people and, you know, putting first things first and, you know, planning ahead and good time management skills and, you know, all of those things really help. So those seven habits are just brilliant. And that book was written in what, the early nineties, mid nineties. I can't. I think, yeah, mid nineties. What a fantastic, brilliant book. And unfortunately he's died now, but you know, he was an amazing character and really that book's gone around the globe. Mm -hmm. I was looking, it's, I think it's 70 million copies sold. They're onto the, uh, the something anniversary edition when I was just looking at it to put it in there. And it's, yeah, uh, but it's funny you say that was the first sort of self-development book you, uh, you, you read as well, because uh, I make notes about books when I read them and I got out my, uh, my old notebooks and this is uh, notebook number one. <laughs> and the first wow. book is the seven habits. <laughs> so it was the, the first one that I read as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I've scribbled all over mine, and you know, my mum always taught me never to scribble in books. But you know, my my my, I'm deeply read, and every book that I read, I really consume. And then, the key is to consume something, not just read it, but then sort of say, okay, what are they saying to me, and then do it. You know, and that's part of the gift economy too. It's not just about reading it; you have to do it. Yeah. And that's part of the whole leader's life concept. Isn't just you know, actually, you know, don't just read about live stream. Just go and do it, even if you're shooting with an iPhone. Just start somewhere. Yeah, yeah. That's the. Well, we're nearly up the uh, top of the hour again. So uh, I always like to ask, though, if you've got uh, some advice for, uh, you know, any uh, either budding live streamers, people starting, or maybe people who are maybe slightly more relevant, is if people are existing business owners and are thinking of using live streaming like, as a tool in their business, what sort of piece of advice would you give to uh, those sort of folks? Okay, four things. Okay, first of all, um, be brave. You know, just do it. You know, we just talked about that briefly. You know, try new stuff. Take a risk. You know, these are massively important. You know, being brave in 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 this new world. The world is changing all the time and it's rapidly changing. We can hardly keep up with it. 
So, you know, we need to be on our feet and we need to be on our toes. Um, so have courage, you know, do something new. Um, for me, that was you know, doing something new, like get to know you in five and just accelerating, you know, change within the show. So it, it doesn't stay still. Backstage Red is introducing that. We're going to introduce a thing called Fishbowl Fridays. It's a whole new concept. So, you know, there, there's some new stuff coming, always thinking about being brave. Try the next thing. Don't just stay still you know do something different the next thing is you know build community there's real power in that and for me my niche is around building community and talking about high performance teams soft skills emotional intelligence but weaving that into the show rather than just talking about it per se because it's a flat subject but bringing it alive by um by talking around it and being brave enough um to do that so building community massively important for live streamers um i think and another maxim of mine, which I absolutely love, and I, I do this as as part of just who I am, make someone's day, you know, make people's day. You know, it's fun to do what you're doing. Make, make the day of your audience and, and maybe someone will pick up what you're listening to and make their day like Alec Johnson did for me when he shot his video on the RCP2 and showed me how to do all the, the mixed minor stuff on multiple channels. And it was like... Alec, you made my day. You know? <laughs> and I think I made your day back by telling you you made yes, my day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because the thing is, that's a two-way street, right? You For know, sure. when, when we make someone's day, it makes our day too. This mm-hmm. is a two-way street. So it builds rapport both ways. So make someone's day. And, you know, lastly, most importantly, love what you do. If, if you can't love what you do, and my speaker said this today without any prompts at all, if you don't love what you do, you know, and do it consistently well and get better and better at it, then, you know, we're... We're here on this planet once, you know, make it fun. You know, it doesn't, you know, what people will always often say, well, what happens if things go wrong? Well, actually, <laughs> turn that around. What happens if they go right? Uh-huh. You know, because they could go right. And yet we're often thinking about, well, if it goes wrong, it doesn't matter. You know, just go with it and love what you do. And that to me is what generates enthusiasm and inspiration from other people um who 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 kind of just buy into what you're doing because it's fun right and people like fun yeah yeah that thing about you know when you you make someone's day and you get it back i mean that's i i always love reading the comments and you'll get somebody who'll say something that's uh you know <laughs> just like that <laughs> and it really does you know make your day as the the creator or the the live streamer or whatever um, yeah because there's a lot that goes into this isn't there alex you know there's a huge amount of of you know my build-up you know goes on all week uh-huh. and so they're always doing something um towards the show you know and it's so little things like buy me a coffee and then just making that fun and people yes. then buy your coffee it's just great you know when that happens because it's a bit of double feedback you know they they enjoy doing it because they're saying thank you but yeah. i enjoy seeing that you know alec has just bought me a coffee how cool is that yeah yeah it's a really a really cool thing <laughs> Um, I've left links, obviously, to everything that you're doing in the description and in the show notes for the uh, for the podcast as well. But perhaps you could just tell us, like, where's the uh, the sort of best place for people to connect, and also maybe about uh, sort of leaders live. Exactly uh, when is that, and uh, uh, how they can uh, they can find you and so on. I'm just bringing up the uh, website, obviously, for uh, people watching. <laughs> yeah, it's a brand brand new website. Um, we still haven't totally populated it yet. The idea was let's just go live, and you know. Um, in, in fact, this is a this is a first version of this. This is a um, this is built in um, it's a built in Squarespace. Oh yes, but yeah. we're building another website right now because we couldn't get all the complexity and we wanted with right. Squarespace. So my web team have said, right, we're going to scrap that straight away uh-huh. and we're going to go for WordPress. So we're just about to launch the WordPress. So so my web team is saying, that we go live with this. It gives some of the detail, it gives some of the vibe of what we do, but it's not completely up to date yet. So that's yep. Leaders Live tv and that will be changing dramatically mm-hmm. over the next week or so. so we thought well we'll go live anyway with the spirit of going live um but it's but it's not done yet so um you know we've got plenty more to add into that so as you can see some of the live shows are coming up here on the uh, replays on demand and things like that these are some of the old shows um you know we've we've changed the graphics slightly uh-huh. since then but it's very consistent so that's where you can get hold of me i'm le- i'm a big linkedin fan as i said earlier so please contact me connect with me on linkedin you know yeah, I'm delighted to get messages from you. I tend to connect with most people that that will, you know, that are serious and want to connect with me. So, um, you know, I, that that's principally how to get hold of me. And you can get hold of me on my other website, which is PDX Consulting as well, which is um, PDX-Consulting.com. There it is, uh, which is my other website. So, yeah, this is uh, this is all about high performing teams and other teamwork facilitation events that i do and there's lots and lots of detail there um 
So there's lots to find out in videos and, and things like that as well. All about high performance teams, NLP, sales, operations teams. You know, I work with all sorts of teams. So that's a little bit about me, folks. Great stuff. Well, as I say, I've left links to all of those uh, different places you can uh, uh, connect uh, in the uh, in the show notes oh. in the description. And yeah, and you said where I am is Tuesdays. Oh yes, forty five m UK time is Leaders Live. Sorry, Alec, I just forgot that. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So, uh, and d- d- have you got another another show coming out, or was it? Am I getting confused with it's just you have an extra? I think I might be getting confused with the extra slot you've got in the middle of the existing show. <laughs> So, so uh, we've got another show coming out called Fishbowl Fridays. Oh, um, right. we're, we're organising that, which is a little bit more, it's it's a bit more in depth. We're going to do that to a, a sort of a VIP exclusive group right, um, right. that we're doing at the moment, which kind of goes a little bit behind the scenes. Uh, we talk about demos and we get kind of into more the, the steps and the processes behind things and some of the products. So um, it's it's a little bit more detailed oriented, but the Fishbowl Fridays we're really excited about. We we haven't we haven't launched it yet, but we're hoping to launch sometime in October. So that's watch this space. Great stuff. <laughs> that's where we're <laughs> headed. Well, thanks so much for uh, joining me. It's been a, a, a pleasure speaking to you finally face to face. We've had a lot of back and forth before this, but uh, yeah, to actually uh, to speak in person, so to speak, is uh, yeah, been really really great, and love to hear your uh, your story. Thank you. Thanks ever so much. And thank you for having me. And um, thank you to your wonderful audience. Thank you very much. (laughs) Thanks a lot. Well, that is it for this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to be joined by Steve Worthy. Steve is a retail leadership coach, a podcast coach, and a live stream expert and a content creator who helps uh, leaders and podcasters grow and multiply their influence. And we're going to be talking about how to create masterful promotional strategies for your live streams and podcasts with promotional content that's actually engaging and valuable to your community. How about that for an idea? This seems like uh, just the sort of thing we've been uh, talking about today as well. But it's sure to be another insightful conversation as always. Uh, So look forward to uh, seeing you then. In the meantime, have an absolutely wonderful week ahead.